I mean, when you when you have the uh, Federal Reserve throwing up trillions of dollars at people and nobody knows where it goes, <laughs> it's such a disrespecting of human work needs and role needs uh, shown by the Federal Reserve, like a bomb. Hey, we just released seven hundred billion to uh, Goldman Sachs, and it'll it'll get to you guys eventually. And of course, it does. And that is so. Uh, anti a sense of human community that we had to go back and have a, a, a universal global revolution as a nostalgic art form replay of Andy Warhol's factory. When you make statements that, you know, the Federal Reserve uh, prints 700 billion out of thin air, releases it to American Goldman Sachs, tells them how that eventually get down to you and never will be. And so as a, as the effect of that is this kind of global Occupy movement. Um, but that is actually a replay of... Uh, it's it's, it's you know, a red herring. It's like the Dead Man War. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's putting your head in the sand. You see, the clue used to satirize social people getting socially involved more than the time on the street. Because they knew that was a reflex reaction to the uh, globalizing uh, empathy that television seemed to create. All right? Everybody felt connected, just like the wired world for the last 15 years of freedom. Everybody connected. That's a nostalgia because what's really happening is people are getting disconnected. The community is getting disconnected, and in the Android B phase, machines are getting disconnected. So and they're me. Right, so the, maybe you're saying that uh, the Occupy movement isn't really so much about people going to the Occupy Park, but it's more about machines that are That's right, it's a nostalgia for, yeah, like I said, it's a nostalgia for 2.0. As so 3.0 is, co is coming in, so <laughs> Occupy was a great nostalgia for the ESP of 2.0. So the machines are the ones that are actually protesting. The machines yeah. are the ones that, yeah. that, that are yeah. that are that are calling that are calling the bail out. That's right. And and the main contradiction that the occupiers couldn't uh, I saw this a couple times when the stupid news zombies came around and, and wanted to find out what they were about. They always point out, well, you're against all this corporate stuff, but you're using a computer and you're online. And the, and the occupier didn't have an answer for that. They had, yeah, you're right. I don't use either machine. And what neither realized, the reporter or the occupier, that the machine was the thing occupying the park, not them, not their chemical body. But they thought they were the occupiers, so they couldn't explain why this machine was sitting there. This is just the MacBook was sitting there on their lap. And they said, yeah, this is what we use to communicate. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. That's pretty, yeah. pretty good. It's the old line McCoon used to say in the 42 Kennedy to say McCoon would say that people don't smoke cigars, cigars smoke them. Well, so the Android machines did the Occupy, and everybody thought they were doing the Occupy themselves, but they weren't. They were being, well, they, we can't even say what the chemical body is doing. It, it, it is sort of there in the process, it's in the mix, right? It's speaking, it's talking, it's eating, it's shitting, it's backing up cops, cops, that, you know. But it's missing the actual people, the invisible environment, the technology. It's Web 2.0 that went on strike there. And that's why there were computers everywhere. Okay, so with that in mind, let's look, let's call the Occupy Wall Street a nano war. Okay, by the end or being among its parts. And read this first paragraph with that in mind. So, Occupy Wall Street is the omniscient justice of historical consequence, meaning the meme of literacy, the Android meme, propped up as a value against Web 3.0. It said, no, Web 2.0 is the legislative power. And the community that's evoked on Facebook is the fundamental uh, uh, administrator of radical societal change. Your kind of change, Mr. 3.0, we don't agree with. It's too, too hard to figure out what it is. We want the old kind of radical societal change known as 2.0. <laughs> you get what I'm saying here? Yeah, no, right, 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 right. So, so the force of 3.0, no, we should say the force of 2.0, dictate the dream, the hope. The force of 2.0 dictate at the most mundane and fundamental level, gather in a park, right, with the bananas or whatever they eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The implications of information versus technology and versus the next thing, uh, 3.0. War is the parent. So 2.0 is the parent of cultural progeny. Cultural progeny 3.0. And as much as 2.0 pertains to the nature of conflict and complication, the temporality of 3.0 is implicated in the condition of diminishing latency. That's the hope. That's the 
prayer. I hope your three point is not very late. Okay, the images of 2.0 are, and I'm going to shift more from the both 2.0 and 3.0. They're mixed up. The images of 2.0 are instantly mirrored the moment the activity is executed. There's no hiding the barbarism to you commanding the death of 2.0. We don't like the the psychic death that the, the android team death that 3.0 is going to bring in. So a large part of the android team is celebrating the old form of barbarism and inhumanity and death called 2.0. Okay? It is a spectacle extremely appropriated to technical reflectors who inimitably broadcast vast destruction across the hemisphere. That can be both, see, you're describing 2.0, but it's hoiked up as a value against the unforeseen pterodactyl monster effects of 3.0, which we can't even fathom.